a vehicle's velocity is given by the graph below. Okay, so the x-axis uh, represents time. So let's I'm gonna go ahead and mark that here. So this axis represents time, and that is um, in hours. So this this guy right here is one hour, two hours, and three hours respectively. The other axis, the vertical axis, that measures miles. Okay, so two, four, six, eight, and ten miles. Now what we're asked to do is we're asked to, using three rectangles of equal base length, we're going to estimate the area under the curve from zero to three. So we want from here to here the area under the curve. Well, what does that look like? Well, let me block this area off for you so that you can see we want all of this area. That's what we're looking for. To get a, an idea of that area, what we're going to do is we're going to put some blocks under there, three equal length blocks, and now I've got that nice, nicely divided out here. So let's let's take a look. I'm going to use, now you can use a left hand, a right hand, a midpoint, however you want to estimate this. I'm going to use a right hand value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let my x1 be equal to 1, my x2 be equal to 2, my x3 be equal to 3. Now I want you to be very careful. This one doesn't have to be the same as this one. This means the first x value, and the first x value is 1. This means the second x value, and that's 2. If this number right here had been a 7, then x2 would be equal to 7. So now what we'll do is we're going to create a couple rectangles. So I'm going to use the right hand of my interval. So my first interval is from 0 over here to 1. So I'm going to use the right hand endpoint, which is here of that interval. And I'm going to grab the height of the function. And I'm going to use that height over the entire interval. And I'm going to call this this entire box, so we're talking about the whole area in between here, that's area 1. So area 1 is going to be equal to delta x, which is the base length. Okay, That is my interval length. And I'm going to multiply it by the function at the right hand value. So a lot of times for notation we'll just write f at x1 but remember that's the same as delta x times f at 1 because x1 is equal to 1. So what is our delta x value? Well delta x is the length of the base and the length of the base is 1 unit. So Delta x, let me just draw it on here. I know it's real small down here, but delta x is this entire length right here. So that's why it's a value of 1. So we'll take the base, multiply it by the height. Now f at 1, the question is, what is the height? What is f at 1? This is the same thing as saying, what is the height? at x equals 1. That's what we're asking ourselves. And so the height at 1, it appears to be 1 over here. So this is also going to be a value of 1. So 1 times 1 is 1 square unit. So this, this box right over here, this box right here is 1 square unit. Now this appears to be an overestimate. to the actual area. Because look, if I, if I erase that in there, the actual area is here in red. This is the actual area. But the box estimated all of this area. 
So what do we overestimate by? Well, the amount that we're off by is this amount right here. Okay. So that's area one. Now area two, our second box, we use x2 as our height value. So we'll go up to the function, we'll grab its height, and that'll be the height of the box. And of course, its base length is here. And remember that base length is delta x. So now what we want to know is what's the height? Well, the height is f at x2, which is f at 2, and the height at 2 is 4. So area 2 is the base times the height. The base length is 1. The height is f at 2, which is 4, so 4 times 1 is 4. Again, this is an over estimate. Why? Well, this entire box overestimates the area under the curve by that much. But don't worry about that. Okay, It's not that big of a deal right now. All we're trying to do is get estimates for area 1, area 2, and now let's erase this. We're going to come back over here at area 3. Okay. So we need to take, because we're using the right hand values, we take on our interval, this is our interval that we're looking at, which is our delta x, on that delta x interval, delta x is the length of it, I just want to point out that the interval is not called delta x, the length is delta x. The right hand value is what we're going to use for our height. And so we go up to where the right hand is on the function and we create another box. Okay, And the area in there is what we want. So let's just write it over here, we'll squeeze it in. Area 3 is delta x times f at x3. Well delta x is 1, that's the length of the base. The height, it appears to be 9. So our area is 9 there. And so, if I put those guys in, this area we came out to have 1, this guy 4, this guy 9. And so our total estimated area, again that's an estimate, that should be equal to 9 plus 1 plus 4, which is 14 square units. Okay. Now the interpretation of that, um, we'll talk about that later in this course, and you'll also, if you take a physics class, you'll talk about the interpretation of that as well. Okay. But again, we've got we've got a total estimated area of 14. Clearly, that's an overestimate. We overestimated by this guy, this guy, and that guy.